Gompertz, Normalizing the Abnormal, Gompertz vs. Normal, Part 4. Just how good is the Gompertz that people want to use? Is it better than the normal curve which works very well to peak and allows a simple assessment of the post-peak behaviour? Note to sensors we use only government data. If you have a problem with the results, speak to the government. We've shown you roughly how we auto-fit normal and Gompertz curves, setting the total a mean or median and adjusting the spread so that the peak value matches the data peak value. That provides a unique curve. Either it's a good fit for the data or it's not. There's no wriggle room. 155 countries, including New York City, but country for convenience, have over 1 million population, over a thousand cases, so plenty of opportunity for a real contagion. Of those, 125 or so generated autofit normals and gompers so that we could measure their stats for accuracy. We'll see that you can get a good result for the wrong reasons, choppy data, multiple outbreaks, and can miss out on a good fit because a data spike spoils the natural peak image, but looking at the whole we get a pretty compelling picture. This is the fit to peak, i.e. prior to peak, and the error being supposed deaths per curve over actual deaths, minus one, to get a percentage error. Greater than zero is overestimating deaths, less than zero, underestimating. You can barely see the blue, normal, but red, Gompers, is consistently and substantially off. Prior to peak is when all the propaganda was at its highest, massive threat, exponential, and having a good fit to contradict that is critical. From this summary, Gompers isn't even close to being effective or appropriate. Post peak, Gompers does better, but both have substantial errors. There's a simple natural bias which we'll illustrate based on the Gompertz fat tail. Given that Gompertz is always modelling more deaths, then extra deaths as time goes on will work in its favour. No problem, we'll look at that. We've already looked at the UK, so we'll use it to re-familiarise. Notice that this chart also has the totals and they reflect the difference in the autofit methodologies. Since normal is symmetrical, we only need to wait for peak and, as we'll see, not even that, to create a normal fit, so it will not be connected automatically to the red solid line. The gap between the two shows the degree of asymmetry in the chart. Put another way, had the COVID-19 acted or been reported entirely normally, we would have had fewer than half the reported deaths. Even that would still be massively higher than the Far East, but it shows why critical review of the chart is essential. Likewise, the UK deaths and autofit are just a tiny fraction of the information available on our standard chart. The video chart and stats essentials introduces all the elements available, barring later right-hand column of stats. As an example, and per our earlier review, notice how the dotted green line, normal daily deaths, is a perfect fit for the UK to peak raising the question of why did a perfectly normal virus contagion go off the rails with those bizarre oscillations to boot. The blue dotted Gompertz may satisfy people who want to explain away the tail, but it's nowhere near accurate in explaining the virus prior to peak, so it's a fantasy. Sorry, Gompertz doesn't cut it for the UK. We'll briefly illustrate how we autofit the compass to the data. For the normal, we detect the peak data, peak value, cases to peak, and set a scaling factor based on two times cases to peak, adjusting to avoid double counting peak. We set the mean according to the peak date and try a typical standard deviation. We know the standard deviation will be wrong, but by comparing the resulting curve's peak value to the required peak value, we adjust the standard deviation and we're done. It's been shown elsewhere. For Gompertz, it's not dissimilar. Gompertz has three parameters imaginatively labelled A, B and C. You can check the wiki page. A is scaling, B is left to right and C is the slope of the cumulative chart. We derive the daily data from the cumulative chart. 
Scaling A is easy. Add up all the deaths, then use a standard bound to be wrong set of parameters, giving the curve shown as here. Now B is left right, but C, the slope, modifies the left right of the peak and the total value at the peak. So if we do B then C, we'll get the left right correct for peak date, then make it wrong when we adjust C. So we have to do C first. Given the peak value of our first dotted grey attempt, and finding out what it should have been, max daily deaths, we scale the C parameter and get a second attempt, the dotted pink or mauve or whatever. It's now the right height and shifted a bit to the right also. Hence we do this first. Now the pink is to the left of the actual peak date, so we can measure the day's difference and adjust the curve to shift it left-right so that the peaks are aligned. That's it. We've used the total, which is fixed by the data, and the peak date, which is fixed by the data, and the peak value, which is fixed by the data. There's no wriggle room. That is the unique Gompers curve with the assigned total, slope adjusted to fit the peak value, and left-right adjusted to align the peak. That's it. If that peak isn't a good fit for the data, then it isn't the data that's wrong. Yes, you can argue you should have used a different curve. That's why we're here. Saying, I'll put up with a terrible fit when the normal's perfect to peak because I'm embarrassed by the long tail, doesn't cut it. But hey, do as you like. When Ebola, SARS, flu, 1918 and seasonal, and COVID-19 data infographics, Ferguson, ICCRT report 9 chart, are all robustly handled by the normal with an excellent fit to peak and an easily assessed trailing skirt, I need a very good reason to abandon it. Gompers isn't it. But hey, let's go through some charts and see what we notice. I'll try to do significant charts that have something to teach us, then bundle the rest for you to browse at your leisure, likely in a final video. Let's start with Austria, and that purple line is the growth factor, today's deaths over yesterday's deaths, which we expect to decline in a straight line through the contagion. You can mostly ignore it for considering the normal versus compass, but we may discuss it somewhat. Now Austria is one of the responsible agenda countries, whose charts don't look inherently fraudulent, unlike US, New York City, UK, Spain, Sweden, South American countries, among others, that have charts that throw off huge fraud alerts in our standard charts. As such, there's a ho-hum to normal versus compass here. Notice that all trailing deaths will tend to work in Gompertz's favour, given its fatter tail, but the priorities are to peak and to the fit post-peak. I wouldn't lose sleep over someone saying, oh look, it's Gompertz, but Normal did very well until halfway down the backside when Austria had another outbreak, shifting it to the right. I'm using this to illustrate that if all charts were like this, it would be much of a muchness, Good fit to peak from both, actual data between normal and combos on the way down. Visually I'd call that a tie. In the ranking top left, those late deaths contribute to a Gompertz win. Fine, no worries. Algeria as we start to go through regions, Africa first, and countries alphabetically. We won't do them all, but stop on ones that can teach us something. The rest, as noted, can go in a browse at your leisure video. Notice that normal totally blows Gompertz away on this one for a couple of reasons. A. Gompertz being asymmetric, we can't use the simple double deaths to peak rule, but have to count all deaths. Practicality is a legitimate factor, provided we're talking two similarly useful curves. Second, unlike the UK, Algeria had no objection to coming down totally normally instead of going walkabout at peak. It does eventually continue on its way, a lingering issue, but that's why we have charts to track that. Normal totally nailed it, Gompertz did not, sorry. And if someone wants to say, yes, but I could have written an algorithm that tested for significance of peak, separated out the post-contagion deaths, twerked for victory, fine. Two columns of an Excel sheet for normal, three for Gompertz, easy in both cases, how are they doing? Angola, 
Very sporadic data. Converts left it late to join the party, whereas normal is right there. 2% error. Miraculous compared to Ferguson's 13,700% error. It's a win for normal, but not going to lose sleep. Eyeball tells us it's a chaotic reporting environment with virtually no deaths. Benin, again sporadic data, very few deaths. Are you paying attention, Ferguson? Much of a muchness up front, win for Gompert's post, but they both capture the spirit of a sparse chart, not an issue. I think that'll cover sparse charts. Eyeball is fine, normal is fine, not throwing it out so far. Ethiopia, again an elegant example of how normal comes in nicely and tracks the main contagion. Gompertz comes in late, missing most of it. Yes, it's sparse data, but that just means it's even more valuable if the simple normal still works remarkably well. Liberia and normal gave us something to work with. Gompertz didn't even show up. You coded it badly. Maybe, but it's a simple spreadsheet in both cases. Normal is robust, handling even sparse data well. Better mousetrap problem. No thanks, normal works. South Africa, I'll include just because it's a major nation, gets a lot of attention. Again, spiky data, normal shows up reasonably early, Converts leaves it late, and they're both surprisingly well matched on the downline. But with spiky data like this, the Mark 1 eyeball is better than both. Americas and Argentina, and just to highlight that on incomplete contagions, the normal fit with its double to peak advantage is simple to implement and robust with reasonable results, rather more so than Gompers here, just saying. Which does rather raise, you the, raise the issue of, I found one, I found one, when an enthusiastic finally uses a country he can use a Gompers on, and likely wipes out the evidence of fraud in the process. Nice going. Brazil, and this is so funny, it's order concours, not in the competition. I told you I had no idea what's going on in South America, but someone want to tell me that's a legitimate contagion chart? Priceless. Makes the UK seem almost normal. Almost. God knows what's going on. Canada, and this is an exemplary chart of the what the variety. Both do an excellent job to peak, normal slightly better, but no issue, and then normal nails it in the decline to 50% or so, but what would a lazy look say? Oh look, nice compass, based on the finish. Uh, no, it had a totally normal primary outbreak, and a secondary outbreak, which we don't fit, which kicks the eventual decline onto the compass. Was it one Gompertz or one normal and a secondary outbreak? Normal and secondary, and an excellent normal at that. Columbia and an easy win for normal. Hey, wait for me from the Gompertz as it climbs through thin air. Again, a partial contagion, but normal handles it easily. You'd have to figure a complex mass algorithm beyond me to figure out how Gompers can even begin to compete. Cuba, just to acknowledge that sometimes it's a ho-hum who cares, no significant difference, but then it doesn't help us decide either way. Gompers isn't always bad, but it should be apparent that normal is consistently robust, and that works for me. New York City and looks like an easy win for Gompers, one of the rare true fits. Except, normal is still the true fit and Gompers is too early in the climb. New York City is the most fraudulent chart on the planet, so hardly a great ambassador. Anyone trying to tell me that New York City at 485 times or 582 times the Far East or Southeast Asia regions is experiencing the same virus would get my nomination for automatic entry into a funny farm or jail cell. But hey, it's up to you. The Far East and Southeast Asia have picked up a few more deaths since then, 
But compare New York City to Singapore, another city-state. I'll zoom out or in. It is sublime how perfectly normal that climb to peak is in New York City, even using G equals 0.985, the most popular growth decline rate internationally. Constant growth, great growth decline equals normal. The fit is perfect. Why would you question that? Other than the fact that it got hit with 93 deaths days, equivalent in normal mortality deaths per day, when 43% of the world got away with less than one day, and 80% with less than seven days, and it had a 423% lag 14 death rate, but hey, it's up to you. Not the best ambassador in my book. Peru, officially the world's worst hit nation, ousting EUHQ Belgium, US New York City, EUHQ Belgium and UK with a long standing 1 2 3, seeing a pattern here. And what got a little Twin Towers action going? Golden Gate Bridge? No comment, it's just bizarre. And of course, who should give us our best example other than good old US of A? So, what do you prefer? A perfect fit to peak followed by a bizarre post-peak delay of no interest to people pushing a vaccine that isn't ready yet. And even then it dropped to that 50% mark perfectly normally before really just ignoring normal. But hey, Gompertz explains it. Just totally ignore that Gompertz is out in thin air before the contagion where the normal is tracking perfectly. It's charts like this that make me go speculative, like only a pro-agenda propagandist could possibly try to use Gompertz to sell this chart. Not either, absolutely not, but whoever sold him Gompertz when I look at this, I say pure propaganda. Again, throw in some more sophisticated analysis with growth decline for cases and deaths, both excellent fit damn near perfect to peak, and then like the UK, cases go walkabout. Or what they about. Growth decline ignored lockdown, but at peak, magically it goes sideways. It's like, how much do you reckon we can push it? Do you think they'd notice if we didn't have cases and deaths come down at all? Explaining this away as Gompers is pure delusion or fraud. Delusion for those who trusted the experts, and fraud for those experts. Sorry. That seems like a reasonable place to stop. We've skipped a bunch, shown some key slides. There's more. Europe next. I'm Andrew May, there are a six-year-old Brit, mathematician, financier, technologist, husband, biker, pilot, healer, whatever. Feel free to get in touch. Andrew at peerlessreads.com or andrewamather.com. Either should get to me.